Does AI art have a place in education? I think so. In this video, I'm going to go through what I see as some of the top potential educational applications of AI art generators in schools. I'm going to talk about how really powerful AI art generators like Dolly 2 and Midjourney could be used potentially by students and teachers. AI art generators have been around for a few years now but the technology has recently exploded both in popularity and in power. This is a channel devoted to learning, so I brainstormed a bunch of ways I foresee these tools being used in schools as AI art generation becomes available to the masses. So stay tuned for ways teachers and students could use these in their classes. If you're not familiar with this type of technology, I encourage you to look up some of the amazing images that have already been generated using these deep learning algorithms. Search for things by Midjourney or Dolly 2. Some of the pictures produced by these programs are downright magical. And seriously, my mind was blown the first time I got my hands on Midjourney. So though some of the easier to access and less powerful AI art generators like Crayon, Night Cafe, and the Dolly Mini aren't the best at image generation, they do provide for a fun exercise in creativity and some pretty good meme generation. I had my own fun with the Dolly 2 Mini a few weeks ago, but these are nowhere near the quality of other powerful text to image generators that are still in beta like Midjourney and the Dolly too. Most of the images I'm going to show in this video are created by Midjourney, by me, I have gotten a little obsessed, <laughs> and there are other videos to watch that'll debate the is it art question, talk about implications for businesses, and go over exactly how this technology works and how amazing it is. Keep in mind that these are image generating AIs, not image compiling, so they're actually working to make original images from text prompts. But I digress, I want to talk about AI art in schools. <laughs> because if we know anything about technology, something that may seem distant or inaccessible could one day be in the hands of almost everyone and be a huge part of our everyday lives. And like it or not, some of these tools that are in beta will most likely end up in our classrooms one day. So for the sake of brainstorming, let's pretend we're a few years in the future and students and teachers have cheap and easy access to a powerful AI art generating image tool. So the first thing could be generating images for class projects. No longer would students have to waste time searching for images on their own to accompany their PowerPoints or Google Slides. And these could be images that go along with conceptual ideas, business models, storyboards, collages, potential products students are talking about for a class project, or scenes that haven't yet come into existence. Teachers could use these as entry documents to a cool new project idea, even if it's something completely fictional. We could place characters or famous people in new settings or scenarios. And keep in mind, some of these tools are not great at generating human faces in a realistic way quite just yet, but they are getting there and they are getting better. One of the ways I thought of was trying to use historical quotes and putting those into the text to image generators and seeing what kind of images the computer was able to come up with. Even more fun is doing literary quotes or passages from novels. and thinking about how teachers and students could analyze these images based on the description provided in the text. Every single time a new text prompt is entered, a new image will be generated, and you'll never get the exact same image twice. And what about poetry? Think about doing this with lines from a poem. Here are some of my favorites that I've generated just over the past few days with some really incredible lines from poetry. Students and teachers could talk about, does this capture the mood and tone of the poem appropriately? What was interpreted well? What was misinterpreted by the computer? What is lost in translation? It opens up room for some really amazing discussions. You could also have students create an image based on a particular poem. And the best part is students don't need to have any artistic talent themselves to be able to do this. We can even use these images as a writing prompt for students and show students a picture in class and have them generate a creative short story or a poem from it or we could use this tool to create images to go along with students' ideas and short stories and writing. Think about the world building you could do to generate images to accompany writing from students. Let's go over to languages. A lot of these tools are created by people from English speaking parts of the world, and so they work best with English. You could have a group of students starting with a phrase in the particular language of the class, let's say French, and then pass that phrase to the next group. The group could then take the phrase, translate it into English, and put it into the AI image generator. We see what comes out, the image gets passed to the next group, who then interprets it in the language of the class. We can keep going and going and see how close the end result and the beginning sentence actually were. You could do less complex or more complex versions of this. You could even just do this with English and have a fun pass along image 
translation game as an icebreaker in your class. And speaking of icebreakers, you could use this in any subject to have students generate an image or a character or an avatar, something that represents themselves at the beginning of the year in any style from any type of artistic period. And this image could then go into their digital documents or things that they create throughout the year. It's a great get to know you activity and interesting way for students to share something about themselves. It could be useful for more than just ice breaking activities. There's tons of ways you can stretch your imagination and practice creativity exercises using this tool as well. Remember, creativity is a skill that is important across the board in so many different fields, not just the humanities. It's especially important in STEM. So doing exercises in creativity, which can be taught, and trying to generate the most random combination or wild ideas, and seeing the type of images that come out out of a single prompt from the teacher could be really Fun. These tools can generate some amazingly wacky stuff and it's a really fun adventure to try to stretch your imagination while you're playing with them. For history classes, we could practice source analysis. The teachers could generate something and have students analyze the source. You could even do this with the teacher not revealing that the image is AI generated and seeing what they can come up with on their own. We can also do this to practice different skills like claim evidence and reasoning in science classes by showing them an image of a scene or an environment and have students make a claim about the image, tell us about the evidence they see, and then use reasoning to justify their claim. In history, we could also use different artistic periods and look at the same image or the same type of text prompts and see how things change over different historical periods or artistic movements or architectural movements. Of course, art classes, philosophy classes, and computer science classes could all talk about that big question of what is art, who owns this art, is it really art, and what the implications are for the future with this type of technology in mind. In computer science classes, you could talk about setting parameters and what type of inputs are actually going into these tools to produce the outputs that they're generating. For engineering, we could create buildings and text prompts about what types of buildings we wanna see, see what the computer creates, then do an analysis on the actual structural design presented in the image. In environmental science classes, if we're talking about designing cities of the future or environmentally sustainable projects, you could use these images to go along with that. You could generate pictures to go along with your design for space colonies, cool innovative technology of the future, or even an artistic rendering of the consequences of global warming. Math, of course, we can talk about iterations and how many times you can iterate on the exact same image with these tools. You could have fun playing with aspect ratios or even use these images to generate prompts for word problems. If you're in a more creative type of class, an elective, for example, and you're creating characters or maybe a game, you can generate pretty interesting characters through this tool. Maybe you could even use this as a poster for an event like a play at your school. And this is just getting started. There are so many more ways that you could actually incorporate tools like these into your classes and schools. I'm really excited to think about more of them. Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking is the most exciting application for education for AI art generators. If you're really excited about it, maybe even this year, you could create your own Donors Choose project to get money for a subscription for your class for a service like Mid Journey to generate as many images as you want throughout the school year. Why not? Let me know what other thoughts you have about AI art generators in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if you've been inspired and I'll see you later.